Hello, I'm Professor Tim Spector from the Zoe COVID and Health Study. Today, I'll be looking at the real COVID case rates in the UK, not just what the mainstream media are reporting, and how our rates of hospitalizations are comparing internationally, which, uh, spoiler alert, is not very good, and also including what strange things are happening in China. Now, I've also got some interesting data to share with you on cancers uh, from your health profiles, as this was the most voted on topic of interest in the app. Uh, we are committed to bring you these important insights, which feed into this uh, wider health research. But first, uh, let's go back to COVID and this week's data. And we can see from the graph that cases are still decreasing, which is good news. Although uh, not, we've had a 19% decrease from last week, this isn't as bigger fall as we've been seeing in previous uh, peaks. And we're now at about 227,700 people, uh, which is still a massive number of people every day. And we're still above that January peak that really freaked us out at the beginning of the year. Uh, we're at one in 17 people currently having COVID, uh, which is high, but again, the prevalence is lagging behind these, this incidence, which is the new cases, uh, but it is slowly declining. Um, and just as a, as a bit of contrast, the official government stats that are reported in the BBC and a lot of uh, mainstream newspapers is around 40,000 cases a day. So big difference between 230,000 and 40,000, nearly a six-fold difference. Uh, deaths and hospitalizations, they are hovering in terms of deaths around 200 a day and a small decline in hospitalizations, although they are still uh, pretty high at around 2000 per day with hospitals as full as ever, unfortunately. And no real change on that severe category, people on ventilators uh, hasn't really altered over the last few weeks. Um, in terms of age groups, you can see on the graph here that all the uh, ages have, are coming down uh, pretty much in parallel, uh, but it's really good to see the older ages, uh, the over 75s in particular, uh, coming, starting to come down quite fast. And maybe that's because they're reacting more to those peaks than the younger groups. Now, children who tend to drive all these waves uh, in the, at least in the last year um, uh, are uh, lower than uh, some of the younger adults. But uh, it could be that after the Easter holidays, these start to come back again, as we've seen in previous peaks. Let's hope it's not too bad. In terms of the regions uh, where you live at the moment, um, really pretty much uh, pretty uniform, except if you're in Scotland, where uh, you are, you should be seeing greater drops than in the rest of the country in England and Wales. Um, and it's possible, it's all observational data, so it's not causal that the uh, mask mandate rules uh, mean you wear a mask in most indoor places and on public transport, plus free lateral flow tests is having an effect it's hard to be clear or else it's just an indirect effect because people are still more worried about COVID in Scotland than they are in the rest of the country. Um, what's clear is that the these rates are still incredibly high across all the nations. Um, the good news is that um, although we're six times higher than the official daily dashboard figures, uh, we are pretty much the same as the o most recent ONS data, which uh, tends to lag us, as you can see on this graph by a few days, but is pretty much in the same ballpark. They always tend to be slightly higher because they include asymptomatic cases, which uh, we often don't. But that's reassuring for everyone who's been worried that uh, since we switched to uh, self-reporting and people getting their own lateral flows, we'd lose out uh, on accuracy, I think it's really good news um, in that regard compared to this much more expensive survey that the government does. But it does uh, make the point that the ONS and the ZOE surveys are showing six times more 
data than the official stats out there. And I suggest that if they do show these official stats, it really should come with a health warning that these are wildly underestimated the case numbers and giving this false uh, reassurance to everybody. Now, we know that uh, you can no longer report uh, uh, ULFTs um, to the NHS. And a lot of people be thinking, why do we want to test at all? I think the reason is uh, all on this video, the amazing data, and we really care about this data that you're giving us and it is incredibly valuable and gives us this really accurate reporting, uh, which we're now validated with this comparison with the ONS. Now, let's just look how we're doing internationally. Um, looking briefly at some of the rates of hospital admissions compared to other countries, you can see that uh, these high rates we've had for a, a while of um, uh, where we're seeing 2,000 a day, which works out around uh, 200 weekly per million, uh, is amongst the highest of all the comparison countries in the West at the moment, and is still a bit of a worry because it really means that our NHS has no wriggle room at all, and it's unlikely that all these other countries are under-reporting, although there are all worries about this kind of data. And while we don't have any accurate data for China, uh, and this is partly because of its zero COVID policy, they've gone for these extreme lockdowns rather than vaccination and, and letting people get back to uh, life. Um, it's interesting to look at uh, Shanghai where uh, this massive city uh, has been shut down for two weeks with people unable to leave their house with uh, drones flying overhead, warning them and massive fines and people uh, really even essential workers have, uh, have only just been let out of their homes uh, in this case. And they're saying that over 340,000 cases have been reported since the outbreak began in March. I suspect that's an underestimate because we were seeing that every day uh, in, in the UK up until recently. Uh, and of that 340,000, they're only saying there's 10 deaths. Uh, compared to 200 a day uh, in the UK, and around almost 10,000 in the much smaller Hong Kong, uh, where they had uh, similar outbreaks. So it's very hard to work out uh, exactly what's going on, but uh, certainly Hong Kong had a major problem. It's likely that China is underestimating uh, its problems, and I don't think they're going to be able to contain this just by locking everything down. And the death rates are likely much higher because many of their elderly are unvaccinated and they were relying on lockdowns to protect them. Um, all this shows that the pandemic is far from over because if billions of people in China get new infections, that's likely to spread around the globe again. Um, we're currently monitoring rates and uh, to look out for potential new uh, variants because it's six months since the last uh, change and we got Omicron and we've seen small changes within Omicron but nothing dramatically new. Uh, there have been talks of strains like XE which is a combination of BA1 and BA2, so-called recombinant, but these still haven't taken over from Omicron, they haven't shown themselves to be actually better uh, at spreading them than Omicron. So we'll We'll keep monitoring, giving you updates, and an important clue to new variants is these new symptoms so that we can detect any changes. And so it's timely to look again at the current top 20. Uh, not a lot of change. Runny nose is just slowly creeping up there, uh, now at 84%, and could be confused with uh, hay fever at this time of year. So do look out for that and, and just think, well, is it giving you unusual fatigue or sore throat, uh, hoarse voice or cough that you wouldn't normally get with your um, hay fever? Um, we are going to be asking about some other of these rare symptoms we don't often talk about. Had a big response to our talk for skin uh, lesions last week. Uh, we're going to be asking more about ear ringing. Ear ringing. Uh, we don't know much about this. There's not much in the literature. 
So look out on your inbox on Friday. Uh, we'll be sending out a survey uh, through email with your weekly newsletter. In terms of health profiles, um, obviously cancer is your number one topic based on your voting. And from around uh, 470,000 users, we found that 10.5% uh, of you had a diagnosis of cancer at some point in your lives, which actually that's one in 10. That's, that's a lot of people. And 2.4% uh, said you are currently living with cancer, meaning you're under treatment or uh, still under close surveillance. So which are the most common ones? Which, what do we need to be looking out for mostly? Common things tend to be the ones that come, happen most. And in, uh, in this cohort, we're seeing that breast cancer is the uh, most common one. Uh, that's be probably because we have a, a higher rate of uh, females to males, but that's 33% uh, of, of the cancers were, were breast. Next commonest was prostate cancer at 15%. Uh, and generally, cancer gets more common as you get older. The median age uh, in this cohort is 57, uh, with prostate a little bit later. Melanomas, which is a, a form of skin cancer, and breast cancer a bit, a, a bit earlier in life. Now, there are some differences in the uh, between men and women, and uh, around half of all cancers reported are breast cancer in women, and about 43% of all cancers uh, in men are prostate. So these are the two big ones uh, to uh, be concerned about. And we also looked at all types of skin cancers, and there are both benign and malignant forms. Uh, the malignant ones are the ones that spread uh, and will uh, can be fatal. The benign ones are not usually fatal at all. Uh, these are commoner in men than women. And that, interestingly, that's probably because men are, tend to work outside more, tend to be less covered up in the sun, uh, and often uh, in the UK take off their tops and have red necks, etc. cetera. Um, and just a quick look across these um, different types of cancers, you can see that um, we saw slight excess of uh, melanomas in males and than females. A squamous cell cancer, which is a, not a spreading cancer usually, but it's, it's, a, it's a nasty localized one, commoner in men, men with skin exposure. Uh, and a few differences here. Um, bladder cancer, common in males, as is colon cancer, that's a lower intestine, uh, and kidneys and lymphomas uh, are common in, in males. Um, interestingly, uh, a type of brain cancer called meningioma, which has been going up in recent years, uh, is, is commoner in females. And slightly rarer type of cancer that is associated with autoimmune diseases uh, is thyroid cancer, and that's uh, two or three times more commoner in uh, women than men. We don't always know the reasons behind this. It's not always uh, female hormones. Now, um, just some other facts. Around 6,600 of you had your diagnosis uh, since 2020, since the start of the pandemic. That's a lot of people. Uh, and you may have had really trouble getting that diagnosis or delays in your treatment because of the, the strain of the NHS and getting to see a GP, et cetera. Uh, and many, about a third of you are uh, now still under treatment or surveillance. Um, and I think it's worth pointing out the UK has the worst outcome in the world for cancer survival uh, amongst countries with similar healthcare systems, such as the UK, such as Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Denmark, Norway, Ireland, etc. Some of this might be our inefficient referral system, or it might be uh, our having the lowest number of MRI scanners in Europe. They were just about the same as Hungary, or perhaps our general poor attitude to preventive care, seeking health care and not worrying to disturb uh, our doctors. So with the future studies, we do hope to learn more about these delays to diagnosis and treatment and see how 
that's been affecting you over the pandemic in particular. And we think that apps like the Zoe Health app are going to be able to help us in the future to make sure these bottlenecks don't happen and people get the treatment as fast as they really need it. So in conclusion, your infection rates are still really high and dropping slowly. Uh, your brilliant contributions do help us fight diseases like cancer, as we're showing. Do keep aware of any new COVID symptoms, and this will help us detect any changes which could signal a new variant, uh, which we expect pretty soon. And although cases are declining, I don't expect them uh, to drop anytime soon. They're going to stay high. So do remember to keep testing if you have any uh, symptoms at all. And please do wear a good FFP2 or FFP3 mask if you're out and about in crowded places that are poorly ventilated. This is still mandatory in other countries. And in those other countries, they do tell their populations that cloth masks probably don't work. And so you should get the best mask uh, you can afford. So finally, uh, do remember to like and subscribe to our channel so you can find out about our videos, share the app with friends and family, keep an eye on our website and an app for updates. And finally, continue to support science and keep logging.